Hello everybody, so this will be a talk on chronic lymphocytic leukemia or CLL and chronic lymphocytic leukemia is a disease of the B lymphocytes. Now it says chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL, and yes there are B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes, but chronic lymphocytic leukemia is a disease of the B lymphocytes, even though it doesn't say B lymphocytic leukemia, it is a, a disease of the B lymphocytes. So uh, B lymphocytes can turn into plasma cells, but that's not going on in chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Remember that the disease of the plasma cells, that's multiple myeloma. So this is a disease of the B lymphocytes. And uh, this is leukemia compared to normal blood. You tend to see more uh, immature cells, more diseased cells in the peripheral blood. With chronic leukemia though, not so much. More so acute leukemia is when we're really going to see a lot of, uh, of immature cells in, uh, in the peripheral stream. So what is chronic lymphocytic leukemia? As mentioned, it is a chronic clonal proliferation of B, uh, B lymphocytes. And like CML, chronic myelogenous leukemia, it's usually discovered on routine CBCs. Uh, as an elevation of the white blood cell count. So the reason for that is because any of the chronic leukemias, they tend to be pretty indolent as far as symptoms. So the symptoms are constitutional. They can be fatigue, weakness, low-grade fever, lethargy, maybe even a vague dyspnea. But in general, they're not the things that prompt you to go to the hospital or go see the doctor. Uh, usually when we diagnose this, it's a coincidental diagnosis that the patient's already in for something else. Maybe they're in for just a general checkup. Maybe they're in for, uh, for a, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, they're in for medication changes on their diabetic uh, drugs or, or, or something, uh, something non-severe like that and you discover on CBC that they've got this elevation of their white blood cells, that's going to be what more often than not points you towards one of the chronic leukemias, either CML or CLL. Now, if the patient has very advanced CLL, yes, they can have some of those blunt symptoms, those more dramatic symptoms that we associate with leukemia being you know, very advanced anemia, uh, easy bruising, infection, uh, but in general we tend to see less dramatic symptoms in the chronic leukemias. And the thing with the lymphocytic leukemias, and this goes for acute lymphocytic leukemia as well, there tends to be this infiltration of other organs, the heart, the lungs, even the, the CNS, and so that's something to keep in mind. Now the median age of diagnosis for chronic lymphocytic leukemia is 70 years of age, so quite advanced in, in age. 90% uh, of cases are diagnosed in patients that are older than 50, so this is a, uh, a disease of uh, the elderly primarily. So the symptoms, as mentioned, it's going to be pretty undramatic. Usually you're going to diagnose this, uh, or you're going to be tipped off towards, uh, towards CLL uh, and CML, for that matter, based on an abnormal uh, CBC, uh, elevated white blood cell count. Now, with CLL, because this disease is affecting the B cells, and B cells make antibodies, you can have a hemolytic anemia, and it would be, of course, Coombs positive hemolytic anemia. So signs and symptoms related to hemolytic anemia would be, of course, anemic symptoms, fatigue, etc., cetera, uh, and jaundice. So if a patient comes in with signs and symptoms related to hemolytic anemia, uh, of course, remember the first step is going to be to get a Coombs test. If the Coombs test comes back positive, Indeed, chronic lymphocytic leukemia is part of your differential diagnosis, particularly if your white blood cell count is elevated. In addition to your CBC, you want to have a peripheral smear. And if you don't have that done with the CBC, most of the time you get a smear with your CBC. But if you don't have your peripheral smear done with your CBC, you're going to want to have that. In general, CLL is a very likely diagnosis or a very probable diagnosis in an older patient with an unexplained white blood cell elevation. But if the peripheral smear comes back and it has smudge cells and the pathologist sees this and tells you smudge cells, then it makes CLL very, very, very likely. Now, 
this is not step two and step three are not tests of pathology. You are not going to have to look at a a peripheral smear and know oh that's a smudge cell it's CLL. What you do need to know, however, is the word smudge cell equals CLL, or perhaps our rods equals AML. Uh, you do need to know these these pathology terms, but you don't need to look at slides in general. The most valuable test to confirm CLL, if you do get these smudge cells, if the test asks you what's the best diagnostic test for CLL, flow cytometry is really, really good for CLL because what you're getting is uh, this elevated production of these uh, cell factors and those are CD5, CD19, and CD23. And when those are elevated, that points towards CLL and that's a very specific, uh, a very specific test. Okay, so as far as treatment, what do we do? Remember, most of these patients are very old. So do we want to put them on chemotherapy? Maybe not. You can live with chronic lymphocytic leukemia and chronic myelogenous leukemia untreated for a long time, actually. And so we don't necessarily want to hammer these patients with, with uh, chemotherapy drugs, which tend to have some pretty nasty side effects. So for chronic lymphocytic leukemia, in general, we take a watch and wait approach. And the treatment should really be started when significant clinical symptoms develop, like uh, hemolytic anemia, or definitely if the patient's got significant infiltrative symptoms, splenomegaly, hepatomegaly, um, if the patient starts to have significant bone pain, or they certainly if they develop anemia, thrombocytopenia, then that's when you should start therapy. So what do we use in therapy? With younger patients, we're going to use a stronger drug. So these are patients that can tolerate chemotherapy, uh, and so we can use a stronger drug for them. And we use what's the most effective drug in CLL, and that's fludarabine. Now, older patients, yes, fludarabine is the most effective drug for CLL, but older patients tend to get really sick from fludarabine. And because they're older and they have other comorbidities in general, we don't want to use as strong of a drug. We want to use something a little bit easier on them to treat their symptoms and to treat their CLL, but to not totally hammer them and possibly, um, possibly uh, hurt them with side effects from chemotherapeutics. So we use something a little bit more gentler, and that's chlorambucil. So if you have a younger, more healthy patient, you should go with fludarabine. Older patient, I would say older than 70, 75 years old, you should use chlorambucil. Uh, but really, it's a, it's a judgment call. And anytime a patient has hemolytic anemia in conjunction with CLL, you should be treating them with prednisone. And actually, you're going to treat any patient with autoimmune hemolytic anemia with prednisone, period. Uh, so if a patient has hemolytic anemia, uh, if they've got anemia and jaundice, you're going to get a Coombs test. Coombs test will come back positive. At that point, you treat them with prednisone. Uh, so we basically just treat CLL patients with uh, autoimmune hemolytic anemia the same way we would treat anybody else. And there are a lot of drugs that can theoretically be used for CLL and Different oncologists, hematologists use different drugs. Um, there's different studies out there, but for the USMLE, remember fludarabine is the best drug. Chlorambucil is a more gentler drug that is, uh, is something that you might want to use in an older patient. And that's pretty much uh, what you need to know for CLL.